everybody. This is Patty Negri. Welcome to the Witching Hour. Yes, the hour of the day when the veil is thin and magic happens. I have some doubly good magic for you today. Not only me, Patty, I have other Patty, one of my dearest friends in the whole world. We've gotten to know each other really great, but you know her as Patty Stanger, the millionaire matchmaker. Indeed, uh, she founded the Millionaires Club in January 2000. And she's the former director of marketing of Great Expectations, the largest and oldest dating service in the United States, as well as an experienced third generation matchmaker. You probably also know her from the, bar, the, uh, the Bravo hit, the Millionaire Matchmaker TV show, which is a staple of everybody's household. But let me just bring her on myself. Hi, Patty. Thanks so much for coming on my show. Feeling good. Yay. Um, Yes, we've been doing our own little magic school together for quite a while now. We even went to a concert together. I found somebody else. You guys who, who my regular followers might know that I'm, the, I thought I was the only fan in the world of Kenny Loggins. No, Patty and Patty together. And we went to his concert and it was awesome. He, he's still got it. Amazing. He's super hot too. Yeah, he is super hot. He is super hot. And his voice, he hasn't lost his voice like so many of those singers. So 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 Patty and Patty talk Kenny. No. And and some of you people are going, who's Kenny Loggins? And then we'll just go uh Caddyshack. Uh, this is sad, sad, sad. I know it is sad. I um yeah, I heard a who's somebody from somebody that I couldn't believe somebody didn't know the other day. Some some like didn't know who like the Beatles were or something. Oh, like, really? Uh, but that's oh my god. I, I know it's they, it's it's. They don't know Elvis is, and then we're really in trouble. Then we're really in trouble. Um. So again, you are a magical, magical girl. Always have been. Always been in a magical practice and things. Um. We do a lot of great things together. How do you think as we stepped into this new crazy world of the pandemic the last couple of years? I know everybody's lives has changed. Work has changed. Mm -hmm. Our TV careers have changed. Matchmaking has changed. Mm -hmm. How do you think we're pulling out of this? Or how can we even use magic or what you do? Um, you well, I think, first of all, internal work is more, more progressively taking over the market than external work. So I'm not putting the apps in. I'm not putting the matchmakers in. Clearly, you need brokers to find you a house. You need a broker for love. But I think the starting point is to take an in internal inventory of yourself and say, you know, why do you not feel good enough? Why aren't you attracting the things you want? And that leads you to magic. I mean, whether you choose a goddess, like I chose Hecate as my goddess, mm -hmm. or whether you, um, you know, whatever God source energy, higher power you're in. I mean, that's really what the tradition of witchcraft is. It's paganism where they worship the earth which we should because the earth is dying and they're not exactly happy. Look what's the cold storm coming in today across the Northeast. It's like that, like it's like the, the crazy storms. Like we've had rain in California for how many weeks? We had one last night and we had an earthquake last week. So that tells you that the earth's not happy. So it starts with the earth. I think that's why the American Indians were so, uh, the country was so beautiful when we got here because they blessed their food. They blessed the earth. And, that's what witchcraft is. It's it's a healing art. You know, it's not a bad word. It's not the Wicked Witch from The Wizard of Oz, which, by the way, is misunderstood. If you watch Wicked, my favorite Broadway show. Completely. Oh, oh, but, but it's totally misunderstood. And she's doing that to protect her loved ones. But at the end of the day, um, you take a moral inventory of what you need and what you want. You take a moral inventory of why you're not getting it. And then from there, you start to take the practices on, whether you're into candle magic or a poppet, which is like a puppet, whether you're into um, green magic, a green witch is like, you know, very popular because they're growing the herbs and those herbs are magical. And you'd yeah. be surprised at the stuff like you've taught me. What's in your kitchen? Start with a lemon, you know, you yeah. know, so much easy things you can do. Someone's hurting you or doing something wrong to you, there's a free spell that you can actually put their name. I like to put a little urine in it. You, you know, it's not bad no. magic to do that. No. And freeze that person out. And I've seen lawsuits go away. I've seen lovers that were abusive disappear into thin air because of a freezing spell. So this stuff works, you know, whether yes. you got a car in your house in the front yard, which Patty can explain what goes in there, but, um, <laughs> and the moon. And so I'm an astrologer. 
And a lot of the witchcraft that we do is based on the time and the hour of where the planets are based on what you need. Like Friday is love, is Venus, and also money. So when you find the Venus hour in your area, because every area is different based on the time zone, that magical point and facing north is super powerful. You're calling in the four elements and then you're going with the flow and even in Asian magic, you know, like with what we're going in, which is called the uh, the rabbit, right? It's the rabbit. Yep. You're, right. They, even though they believe the, everybody's one sign for one year, they use like feng shui to enhance their, their homes, you know, the bagua, that's magic. Anything, law of attraction is magic when you're yep. watching the YouTubers tell you how to manifest what you want. That's basically magic. It's just a different form of the old ways, which is what you and I like to do. We like old and we like simple. Exactly. Old and simple. And again, yeah, it's just how you dress it. It's almost like the outfit you put on. You could put a very scientific right. dressing on it, you know, talk quantum mechanics and quantum physics. You could put a very religious tank right. to it. You could put a new my, age or you could put my boyfriend is supersonic Catholic. I was raised Jewish, but I also found out that my biological mother was Catholic. And the church wasn't a fun place for me. You know, I've gone with friends to church. I think the music is beautiful, but my traditional background isn't like listen to the dogma of something. Um, I tried Judaism. I love my people, but it wasn't for me. It, I didn't feel if you weren't married, you were welcome. That's just the way I felt in temple. Wow. I've, and I've studied Buddhism and I wasn't a fan that he left his family. Plus Buddhist, Buddhist meditation is incredibly hard. You have no back support for hours and hours. They're sitting on a cushion with no back support. You try that for 20 minutes, then call me. And I've done, <laughs> I've studied him and I've studied all the comparative religions. And then I realized I was always a witch. You're born a witch. It doesn't mean you know how to practice it, but you're born because the calling is so great that you step outside all the um, mundane, mundane practices, you know, the dogma, and you yeah. get into it all and you realize you can channel magic. You don't have to rely on anyone else. And for me to accept a goddess into my house, my whole house is, is Hecate. For those who don't know, she is the witch's goddess, like the witch's, the witch's witch, basically. Yeah. And um, she's not the simple, sweet, loving, Venusy kind of witch. She's like, you got to do what she says. She's your mama. She's Saturn, like in astrology. She's going to kick your ass if you don't do it right. And you could tell stories about that till the days come, right? Yep. But the thing is, I knew that I was a heck of a girl from the moment you introduced me because I had never heard of her. And I was like, oh my God her story aligns with me the way she suffered in love and she helps other people and sometimes they don't listen to her and she's got to be the mama and reprimand them i love yeah. everything so yeah and she just like elemental magic is making a big comeback where everybody in the early like the early wicca days and the 80s and over isis is started you know whenever you was all the loving but everything takes a, yeah. a swing into life and she hecate hecate both correct um is is life yeah. is complicated she's complicated and like she's you said not, about the earth we yeah, gotta do it but you will hear her voice like when she talks to you but i've tried ocean i've tried yummy i've tried other goddesses and i put them all over my house and i just didn't feel they were serving me and the connection was there i feel like i was a redheaded stepchild like i'm adopted so i have to be careful of who I feel will accept me, especially in love and friendship and business. So it's no different with a goddess. I didn't feel welcome. And then Hecate came in my house. I was like this, and, and she works fast. But sometimes when you practice with her, she'll teach you a lesson before she gives you the goodie. So it was okay for me to go, I didn't get that thing, but look what's going on. Like I attracted my boyfriend. He's not the easiest person. He's a workaholic and there are things I don't like. And I went and I complained to her last night. And then he called me and said, out of the blue, this is a good magic thing. So I have a, a wishing board that Patty taught, got me and a wishing machine. Oh, one's a prayer board and one's a wishing machine. We can talk about that after. And so the, the prayer board seems to really work. You put your fingers on it and you kind of like settle in and I can meditate and I'll talk to her. I'm like, look, I got this boyfriend you sent me, but X, Y, Z, I'm not really happy. <laughs> then the next minute I put it down, he came over and he said, I got to tell you something. I've really treated you shitty for the last few days and I'm really sorry. Yay. Like, Hecate! So you are looking ah. for the 
things like winning the lottery or getting a brand new car or um, I don't know, getting a trip to wherever, but you're not looking at the little things that, that, that the magic brings you because I didn't ask to fix him. I said, he is who he is. I've got to accept him. She did that. She influenced him because he said all day long, I had anxiety and I didn't know oh. where it came. He doesn't get anxiety. And then I realized, oh, Hecate put a nudge in him. So, <laughs> so there is that. There is this, um, there's this cute little spell that I learned. I told Patty about it where you basically, you do the witch's whisper. I call it the witch's whisper. A lot of people call it the whispering technique. It's on YouTube. But if you blow three times into the person's ear and then whisper what you would like, it usually manifests. It's really great when you want someone to call you and contact you. So the witch's yeah. whisper is like some simple spell. So there's simple spells. There's complicated spells. There's really complicated spells. Like, and we don't... Yeah. We have people working on some stuff for us right now. Right. Like really complicated spells. Yeah. For witches that are doing some work, we had, we, you know, when you're on TV and you're famous and people are jealous of your success and a lot of times they throw you shit and a lot of people go, oh, that's impossible. If you don't believe it, it doesn't happen. No, it it's works. Still it still works and it can mess yourself up if you don't protect yourself. And that's why the witches community is so strong and then people really help one another. If they don't help yeah. one another, but if but and we, let's, have, let, and we all need help. But right. you know what? I just want to explain the whispering thing. Why yeah. the magic of that? Three, of course, is the most sacred number. It's in every religion: Father, Son, Holy Ghost, Mother, Maiden, Crow. Three, one, two, three. You have substance with that. And the breathing, the that's your pneuma, your life force. Of your whispering and blowing, that's yeah. you putting your life force into it. And then the moisture in your breath is your free will. So it's the simplest, most powerful I'm, form because it's, it's your breath. life force. It's your essence. And what I usually do when I don't like someone is I bless my enemies. Yeah. I, that's not easy sometimes, but I bless them. And I say, please help them get in alignment with God's source energy so that they don't harm anyone. And they don't, you know, they don't complicate people's lives. So I always bless them and send them pure, positive love and light. But sometimes, you know, you got a real person in your hands at work, a lover, a husband, a best friend, whatever. And you can't seem to, no matter how many times you sit down and do talk therapy, you know, mediation, whatever, it doesn't work. So you have to use the elements to bring that yeah. person back into. And if they don't do it and it doesn't work, it's not meant to be in your life. That's another sign. Like, you know, okay, that's not there. But I was talking, I was going to talk about black magic where um, the black magicians, be careful of them. I have been in situations where I worked for a witch and Patty knows this and for three years. I worked for a very famous witch. She was a psychic. I was very young. I was in my twenties and she threw a lot of stuff at me. And I know you don't, some people don't believe in curses and some people don't believe in hexes, but they're there. Like, and there are Gregor's, which Patty can explain in a minute what they are. And they will send you negative energy to block your flow because they're jealous. They're angry. They're upset. You're not doing what they want you to do. And over time, it can grow. And then if another witch comes in to do your bidding and you pay magic to get X, Y, Z, let's say you want to get your boyfriend back, that's a little gray zone because now you're changing someone's will. They will ride the curse of the original map of the original witch. I said matchmaker. That was Freudian. The original witch. And then what happens is the energy grows, the negativity. So if like your job falls apart. Patty's going to tell a story in a minute about what happened to her. And I think that's a really important story. But your job falls apart. Your lover leaves you. You know, then it could be as bad as having a miscarriage. Anything, health issues, all that stuff is putting you off your path and off your alignment. So be careful who you go to and don't try to change anyone's will because that will come back to bite you. That's karma. Right, right. And it's the world you create. It's not good or good or bad or evil or heaven or hell but the world you create is the world you have to live in so I, that's what i always look at it there's tons of witches online that said i will get your ex back yeah and i look at that and i go you don't want your ex he's an ex for a reason exactly and you forget like, that but i could change him no you can't <laughs> 
do change the zombie, as I like to call him, he'll he'll after a certain time the the every spell runs its course. So if you're not in a positive course, it will magnify and go backwards and it boomerang to you. You don't want that shit coming to you. So don't go and spend money on things that you know are not good. You want to manifest money. You want to manifest health. You want to manifest love from a origin of no love, no money, no health. That's perfect. That's you and the universe. There's nobody in between. You start messing with somebody else who belongs to someone else because the Akasha records tell you that, which is when we're incarnated in earth, we basically choose our path, who our parents are, who our lovers are, et cetera, et cetera. And if that person's on a list for someone else and not for you, your time is up and they're going to someone else, you now block their flow and that's going to block your flow and no good's going to come from you. And even if you got money now and things are working now, it will come back in the end. You will go, shit, I shouldn't have done that. I have done that. I've tried to get my ex back. He came back in 48 hours. My teacher at the time, who's dead now, said, you are going to be in trouble now. You've just boomeranged karma to you. And for, sure enough, she goes, he's going to cause more pain to you when he breaks up with you the second time. And he did. And it was the worst. Flatline for a year. So don't do it. As a matchmaker, start, start dating. Start meeting new people. Get new energy flowing. That guy's an ex. And I want you to write down why you d it didn't work and what you didn't like about him. And then when you start manifesting love with spell work, that will be the thing you want to term. Like if he was cold mm -hmm. and indifferent to you, he's loving and warm and present for you. So you need to realize there's an X for a reason. Right, right. And we always remember, but but he was this or she was that. Or they, and it's like, no, you're the way you hey, wanted them girl. to be, but not what they were. Ah. No, no, no. The girlfriend, let me just tell you something. That ain't going to work. And men do it too. Gay yeah. people do it. Lesbians do it. Homosexuals do it. You know, them, they. You know, LBGTQ, mm -hmm. nine now at the end. Um, everybody does it. But the thing is, it's not good to do it. If he comes back out of free will, take him if you want him. Then you've got a second chance. But if you're using magic to get him, no, 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 no. Just think about that. Think about what you're doing. And by the way, magic doesn't have to be where you do a spell. You know, we talk about that all the time, that magic is within. So you don't always have to light a candle or bury something in the backyard. You can be doing it like monitoring it. But instead of monitoring X comes back, I'm happy now, whatever, you should be going, I am a happy, I'm in a loving, fulfilling, amazing relationship now, whoever it is. Because right. the universe has something better for you. Trust me on this. So people go, it's Valentine's Day and I'm lonely and I don't have anyone. And I go, what are you doing about it? Now, some people are on the apps and they're fried and burnout, you know? You can always go to a matchmaker like me at millionairesclub123.com. But the other thing you could do is you could start practicing inner magic, working on yourself, visualizing, feeling yourself in the presence of that person, touching, tasting, feeling you, going to bed with you. And then they usually manifest within a good two, three weeks if you do it right. Yeah. You know, if, if, if the magic has resistance, you need to go to someone like Patty to check if there's a block. She's cleaned my house. She's checked the energy. She found a Gregor on me. You want to talk about Gregor? Did I say egregore. it right? I, no, you, but I love how you say it. I'm going to a, an Egregor, which is a created spirit. You put a Greg on the front. Maybe our Egregor was named Greg. Egregor. Greg Gregor. Okay. Egregor. It's a created spirit. We create spirits all the time. We understand like Oh, the spirit of struggle. And we gain. Oh, the spirit of, oh, I'm great in business, but bad in love. Or the spirit of like, I can't lose weight. Was, we have, the, uh, I have to struggle for money. We, anything, a way of being is a spirit. And sometimes when we fall down the rabbit hole and we get into negative places and things are, we start creating a literal spirit of bad luck, little spirit of, I can't do love, like spirit. And it comes on and then everything ever thrown to it, we're creating it. You guys know I do a lot of paranormal stuff. She, Patty does too. But like at the Cecil Hotel, there's such a big created egregore. Yes, there's dark energies. Yes, that's there's probably not, demons. And, and that's not, that's not a created. Person. Tell them that's not a person. That, a person. that energy at the Cecil is not an, a person who died and came back. No. That's not a, a person. That is um, an, a dark, dark, dark force. Dark, so, dark, dark forest put together by what the stuff coming up from the ground, the people who died there, the people it's holding, and it creates a literal monster. Oh, <laughs> Conan, 
it should be a made into a movie that thing i'm watching the are you, I, there's a great series right now, you guys. Um, well, there's like three, three series. We should talk about supernatural series. There's one called Lockman and Company on Netflix that ghosts run the world and kill people. And they have these, you know, agents yeah. go out and kill the ghosts. And it's like the, they're the worst terrorists in the world. It's brand new. It dropped on Netflix. It's number one. I'm watching uh, my favorite writer of all time and it was Anne Rice. And I love the wishing app. They just made the Mayfair witches on AMC. It is so fucking good. It. I thought I was going to be mad because a central character, Michael Curry, was taken out and they kind of merged him with somebody else. But there's still a semi Michael Curry there. Um, but it's it's like it, it's on you're on the edge of your seat. Like last last night's episode, Sunday night's episode was insane. So I encourage you to watch that. You know, there's some really good supernatural stuff happening yeah. and Netflix because, man, and, they love Right. Yeah, they do. I, I, you know, I was honored. I got to host the witches ball for AMC, the Mayfair witches in New Orleans. And uh, I was like, I'm on stage doing a thing to Lasher. I'm like, oh my God, I'm living it in New Orleans. Yeah. It was, and, uh, and if, you're coming and, this year. If, and by the way, if you watch the show, it takes place in New Orleans and it makes New Orleans so beautiful, like the homes and the architecture. It just makes you want to run down, you know, and have a slow gin fizz and sit at, sit down. Yeah. Sit down and like you know, put a poa boy in front of him, you know, like, yeah. But okay. um, that's a great series. And then there's this this other series called it's on Netflix. It's called I forget what it's called. It's called something like um, something with the devil. I gotta look it up. And it's a brand new series from England about uh, blood witches and regular witches. And so it's it's cool that witches are coming out. I just you know sometimes I'm like I get a little upset and I'm like why don't they make us like look like the great like healers and loving and you want to go to them for service and you know instead of like there. oh you know that's it's getting thing. it's getting better we talk about that on my wednesday live the my podcast that we it's we have the witches movie coven and we talk about the witch movies all of the good the bad the ugly that represent us well that represent us bad we love them all even the bad ones I mean, but witchcraft is it, the largest yeah. growing religion in right in, and and the thing that about witches is like, you know, it's a, it, I know that it's like, you think of a witch, you think of women, but there are men, warlocks and stuff like that. But women, it's a women's empowerment movement, you know, mm -hmm. to be with your sisterhood and, you know, work on the craft together. And like, we went to a special Hakate ceremony two weeks ago and we met our, our, our I was going to say our Jewish, our witch friends from the East Coast. They are like specialists in that area. And I could feel, when we did that ceremony to invoke her for mm. that week, I could feel her presence rise like a phoenix in the room. And yeah. they made an amazing statue to her. And it was beautiful. But it was like an intimate group of 20, 30 people. And, you know, some people wore their, you know, gowns. Other people just wore regular clothes. I was just in black. Kind of like, you know, my tribute to, to the witchhead. Yeah. And it was so wonderful because I had never been in a coven. I always wanted to be in a coven. That was like my thing. So, well, so we'll nice. talk later. What are you doing Friday? I'm bringing you something if you want. If you're free. Okay. So that's <laughs> one. The other thing that's really nice is that um, I lo I'm in witch school once a week with Patty. I study with her. We do spells together. And I have her book, you know. But I love that the, the stuff is not that hard to find. Like, we need a dragon's blood one week. And I was oh, my God, that's going to be so hard. Where are we going to get dragon's blood? And she's like, don't worry. I'll go down to the corner store and I'll buy. That's yeah. like, what? It's, There's and dragon's no, blood dragon's blood, blood does not come from dragons. <laughs> it's a plant. I was like, Everyone's like, oh. I, yeah. I was so worried we weren't going to be able to do the spell. And then she does this spell where she takes graveyard um, sure. church said to me you want to come with me and I go no and she goes why I go <laughs> I know me the spirits will go home with me so I have a problem which Patty knows I we'll attract on that I attract spirits so I don't see them once in a while I could see a glimpse but 90% of the time I hear them so they'll sit on my bed like six cents and I'll be like can you let me go to sleep I've left and I was on the haunting with Kim Russo I had to move out of my old apartment because it was haunted by three witches and she cleansed it on the show and they made noise on the show. It was crazy. And um, I just said, well, I don't want to go to the graveyard because they're, they're going to come home with me. And who knows who's going to come home with me unless it's a hot guy. No way. <laughs> I'm really good with spectrophilia, ghost human sex. So right. just saying, like, we haven't gone there yet. <laughs> 
guy. And I said, I don't cheat on my boyfriend. Like, it was just yeah. a joke. When I thought about it. It was like, ooh, I don't know. I don't it's supposed like, to be really good. I don't really like going to the cemetery. I know they have the, the movie thing in the cemetery, right? Yeah. yeah. The one, in Hollywood Forever, I... I love that place. And I didn't used to like cemeteries and so I started learning the magic and it's sacred ground. It's it's sacred ground. And here in the easiest part of that, if you, you know, always ask permission when you come in and you don't have to take someone home, you just clean up. You always leave them offerings like pennies. And if you're doing a money spell, in the mm. simplest forms, go find the richest grave there. Ask them if you can have a spoonful of their dirt. If you're doing a love spell, go find the married the couple that are buried together that were married for 75 years. Ask them if you could have a bit of their dirt. It's sacred right. holy ground. Yeah. That's so, but you know, maybe we should do like a little work now for spell work for Valentine's Day because people are hurt. Yes, yes. What should we and, do? So watch this post valentine's day like some people get okay so the two weeks before valentine's day is the most stressful thing for a man even more than christmas the reason is if you haven't proposed by new year's eve and you're in a long-term relationship the man is like pressure zone and the woman's like come on come on come on <laughs> so a lot of people break up because the pressure's too great there's going to be happy and sad and valentine's and then there's going to be post valentine's day where i'm miserable so we need something to bring in the light so what do you suggest i would suggest look at look at where you're at now if, if you're in a relationship be appreciative of it if it's not perfect work on making it perfect or move, work on moving it out for for valentine's i think we always should be taking stock a little bit and if you're not in a relationship and want to be, I think you've got to make yourself happy first. It, it's even what you teach. It's like, if you're sitting there miserable and waiting for somebody, who's going to want miserable you? Go out, have fun, be with friends, do a hobby. And that's going to attract somebody you want to be with. So if you I, don't. But, but I think we should teach them something that they can physically do. So why don't we come up with like a quick little spell? Because I okay. think that... Um, Friday is so important. So you have two Fridays before Valentine's Day, I think. Maybe, maybe three. I got to look at the calendar. I know we're in the last day of January, but just look at like it's the first two weeks and the Friday before the 14th, because Valentine's is on Tuesday. Now you can think of it like Super Bowl weekend, because the guy will always say Super Bowl weekend. So that Friday night, you need to put your intention in strong. Now, yeah. I would go and figure out what is the venus hour there might be two three venus hours in the day at least two in your area and then i would set my intention you know if you want to write it down and burn a list or whatever and light a, a pink or red candle mm -hmm. um i would set an intention for what i want i'd sit st still and i would visualize maybe palo santa the house don't use sage because as you taught me sage takes out the it might put, it cleans the house, but it takes out the good. So we want to use Palo Santo. And even if Palo Santo only burns for a few seconds, there are great sticks of Palo yeah. Santo that are found on, on, on Amazon. Just put, put Palo Santo sticks, they come in a pack. I don't even use any more incense than that. That's like the easiest thing. I, I staged that. All around house. great, yeah. Palo Santo the house, Palo Santo yourself, sit down 20 minutes, light the candle, and you could do the seven day Adventist one, the ones in the, the, the glass. And if you don't have a witch store near your house, like a psychic store, you can get them in the grocery store because I just saw them there. Yeah, and, you can get them in the grocery store. You can get them at, in, in, yeah, drug and, stores. Everybody's got the seven day count. Should yeah. they dress the candle on top? Do you I would to dress the candle. There's lots of ways you could do it. I'm a big into carbon. Candles, you're going to use all the elements. You're going to have the earth element and the water. Both are in the wax. You're going to have the fire and the air from the, the flame. Remember, the little black part of the flame. So if you're going to get a candle, like Patty said, pink or red. Pink is love, red towards passion. And I, I like I, to murder. I'm up two. I'm a Gemini, so I gotta have two. So pink is for he's gonna love me, he's gonna soothe me, he's gonna be wonderful. And then red is the passion, the lust that he's gonna throw me while I'm rip my clothes off. So I want both. Okay. So I usually do the balance of two mm -hmm. and negative energy in the midst. Maybe he's thinking about someone else, or maybe um, things have stalled. You're bored. He's it's you're not getting along. I do a white one. For peace. Yeah, do the white one and get rid of. And if you want to take stock of yourself, like you said, look inside. What 
what what do I want? What am I missing? What is right. in the way of that? Oh wait, I think I think I'm too fat to have a boyfriend. I think I'm too burn it up, like Patty said, write it down and burn it up because that's no way. Cool. Talk that's about not true. something that Patty does that nobody else does. She'll take a marker, like you know a sharpie, and she'll make me write it all over the candle instead of putting it on a piece of paper and putting it underneath. It's so much easier. You just write, "I am loved. I am adored. I am." You know, I, if you're doing money, for instance, I am wealthy. I have more money than I'll ever need. I have a million dollars by the end of the year. And I always put now as an activation point, but I wrote all over the candle. So it's like, great. It's like carving, but you can't oh carve my, the glass and it's great. Right. Because, and then the, so there's this study done scientifically that the mind is, you know, only from only familiar with what, what it's familiar with. And Naturally, the articulating activating system makes it look for the thing you want if there's a clear path. So if you've had terrible love life and you just like you, you'll write it, but you don't feel it, the mind will trick it to feel it just by you writing it. And for some reason, you can't type it. It has to be written. They've done studies on this. So you'll write it. The activating, you know, the tricky activating system will go, OK, she wants love now. Who's her type of guy? I don't know. She likes tall blondes like Brad Pitt. Let's go look for Brad Pitt types. And the mind will look for it. It'll draw it to you. It's up to you to manifest it from that yeah. point on. But the mind will draw it to you. Yeah. If you are not dwelling on past relationships, right. blah, like no love, you're fat, you're unattractive, you're too old. If you don't dwell on that shit and you stay clear, um, I'm a transcendental meditation person i've been doing it for like i don't know eight years now and i'm at third level and so i'll meditate before clear my mind then spend five ten minutes on feeling what i want then i'll light the candle then i'll look in the flame to see what i'm manifesting and then i'll spend time with it and then i'll let it go and then i just put it i put it in the bathroom uh you could do it in the sink or i like it in the bathtub Okay, I used to put it in the kitchen and Patty said, don't put it in the kitchen anymore. It's not working as well because too many people's energy was in the kitchen. And it's like, like in the, in the sink, like in the sink, like dirty dishes. You, it's got to be like, <laughs> see, if you're not afraid, I put mine on my altar, on my mantle, on my fireplace. But if you're worried about fire, you don't want to do that. But if don't you like don't want to be with the dirty dishes. Now, I had a firefighter boyfriend and he said the number one cause of fires is the candles. So I said, no, I'll do it in the bathtub. So I did the bathtub. And the and only great. that would go there would be David now. But back then, I didn't have a David. I didn't have a boyfriend. Yeah. So nobody went in my bathroom except for the house cleaner. And there was right. less. If I felt negativity, I would I would totally 100% um, Palo Santo. Now, there is something really cool. Dion Fortune's book on protection has a spell in it where you get in the bath. You, you cross yourself to Jesus, but if you don't believe in Jesus, just use God or your higher power. It doesn't matter. And what the way the spell works, you're putting salt in the water, cleansing yourself. When you come out of that bath, your eyes and your our pup pupils are dilated. You know that you're activated. And then, you, then it's a great ritual to clean first before you do the spell because you've had so much trauma or trash or crap on you that you're having a hard time letting go. It, it helps you let go. And right. there's a lot, there's a lot. I mean, we could do a whole hour on. We could do 10 days on this. Yes, we could. We should do something. We should do a whole big love thing. Yeah. But yeah, and a bath is good because water, water is emotion. That's 60%. Right. Salt and water. Like I do a lot of you, white baths, put some sugar, put some milk, put some salt. Yeah, you put sugar in yours. But there's, um, there's like all these toys, like gadgets that we use. Like we're kind of like tech witches now, I would say. <laughs> That's the way I would describe Baby it. Baby tech. We have a wishing machine. We have a prayer board. Um, you know, I got into quantum healing. So there's the Quantum Institute, which I wear this. I haven't worn today the necklace, but there's this, like the pyramid. I'll show, I don't know if I can lift this. So this is a quantum pyramid, if you can see this. Oh, wow. And it's I haven't seen that yet. So you put your food and your drink or anything you want to magnetize, like money, whatever, into it. And it draws energy and they also send energy to your house and your location, or you could put yourself with a boost if you had a special meeting. So like, there's a lot of tech stuff going on yeah. that the foundation old ways. Yeah. It yeah. It's combining old. 
Yeah. Well, they're well, new. And Dr. Mulder did that to the other day, and we both had a good couple of days. Your boyfriend did that, and I had a good thing. I, he, he sent us energy the same. Dr. Mulder, who's the wishing machine guy. Right. And so, Patty, do you have that stuff on, on your on your Instagram or your... I, uh... I do. I On my YouTube page, I have videos on a whole bunch of this stuff. I have my school, the University Magicus. Um, so, yes, do it. I think I, the spell I was going to give you gave. So, you're... Perfect. Right. Well, <laughs> the candle. Layla Quantum. It's called Layla Quantum. L E E L A Quantum. It's hey, on I don't have that. That's on it. Counts when you buy physical products, and there is two. There are cards for love and money that you put on your skin. You put they're like credit cards, and you put them in your bra. One is abundance. One is prosperity. You can do it. I noticed when I started using it, it's going to take a subtle shift. So if anybody's into Doctor Hawkins the different frequencies like 500 is love and above is enlightenment. Like when you get to a thousand, they're sending us that kind of energy. So if you use that with your, you know, spell work, your actual craft, your old school ways, it kind of is a double whammy. And I don't think anybody talks about it. I call us a tech witch now because I'm like, Ooh, look at all the gadgets we're getting. I love gadgets. <laughs> I love I gadgets love too. So long as they're not hard to work, I love gadgets and none of ours are. But what other thing that we could do when we were talking about what people can do, doesn't fragrance have a lot to it? Doesn't oh, somebody we know who's the world's most famous uh, matchmaker have a fragrance? Tell us about that. So a couple of things I dropped this, well, this last year I dropped a fragrance, which is a pheromone. And if you're gay or straight, doesn't matter if you're fluid it doesn't matter there's a million products that we have called matchmaker fragrance it is the strongest pheromone in the world it is how i got my boyfriend um i worked with i have love for years and they had really good pheromones but they went to me and they said we want to create a fragrance with you i helped make this the smells um you know as far as the top notes and the bottom notes and the middle notes and then it's not something you can readily find like, you know, Ulta or Sephora. It's about to go into Saks Off Fifth, by the way. But if you go in my box, it'll link to the site to purchase. And uh, we just came out with the them, they one and the fluid one. So there's a lot of cool stuff. Like who you want to attract. I took the straight one. Um, we have minis and we have... Um, big ones and they look like a diamond. If you click on the link in my bio, you'll see the whole thing. The second thing is I dropped a book this week called Compel, which is a supernatural love story and it has witches in it and it has uh, Andromacrine in it. So if those people who know about Andromacrine, it's supposed to be this, only the elite, like the Illuminati um, are taking this drug to age backwards and it's real. And when we were writing the book, we used that, but we didn't know that it existed. And then we found out what we were writing was real. So that's kind of wow. shocking. And uh -huh. it's Rachel Van Dyke the New York Times bestselling author of The Dark Ones. And she writes all supernatural and, you know, love stories. And we created the story together. It's on Kindle. You click my bio, it'll take you there. And it's about to drop. The soft cover is about to drop in, in about a week and then the hardcover. But you can Kindle it for like six bucks. It's a great read. Um, we're going to be in the process of selling that to Hollywood. We actually are in the process of selling the dark ones to Hollywood. So um, I tell people, people what your website is, how to get to your website. Okay. So if you go to my Instagram, it's so much easier. Go to Patty Stang, A-T-T-I-S-T-A-N-G-E-R. Then just go in the bio. You know, okay. you don't even, it's so much easier. You just click the link and you're there on Instagram. Um, and if you don't have Instagram, you want to go to TikTok, same thing. But if you need to go to my website, you want to be fixed up, you're a millionaire, or you want to be fixed up with a millionaire or millionaires, it's millionairesclub123.com. Millionairesclub with an S123.com. But my bio, you could do it on my bio too. It's really easy. Um, so. and, and, and the thing is, like, all this new stuff, like, like Patty has um, an Oculus, which actually talks to the dead, and it broke recently. <laughs> It's, and there's it's not happy the it's only two in the world we've done it before on my instagram and i'm so bummed out last week she came over and i was like no no and so she called oculus man who like was out of commission for two years in the pandemic he's like don't worry i'll make you a new one i was like what oh we don't know when we're gonna get it but we are hopeful it's I'm like hopeful oh god it will allow us all to buy them and we could sell them because you can turn the button on and literally my grandfather comes in every single time my poppy 
Um, and they say your name. They'll like Patty. They say your name. They'll name names. They'll name places. Hey. Times it's freaky deaky. But she has one that she uses that's really expensive, and then she has one that she uses in her phone, which you which is an app. What's the app called? What's the, that? The, oh, there's a million phone apps now, and spirits are using learning to use them because again electricity is energy we are energy that's why ooh, the lights flash in a haunted house they drain the cameras on set when you do paranormal television um they use the energy off a of battery so ghost radar which is one of the oldest ones still one of my favorite but now you can get an sls camera which is shows the dancing ghost stick figures on your phone oh we had that in my and mirror we had we had two dancing ghosts in my mirror stick figures yeah. and then we on my chair and, and and patty swears he was having sex with another ghost in my chair yeah saying, that's it's got a chair that <laughs> it'll tell you different colors like it'll tell you red is like a strong ghost all the way to blue so like yeah. oh that's a yellow one that's that's and, a friendly but the red one comes in you're like oh what's gonna happen now <laughs> Yeah. Most ghosts are good. Most people are good. Most ghosts are good. And and we have control. So if something doesn't good, you tell it to leave. We just have to keep awareness of that. It's our realm of existence. But anyway, a lot, it's a, a, lot, a lot of witchcraft actually talks to the dead and 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 brings them to life, you know, like yeah. in, in any movie, it's always like them talking to the dead and trying to resurrect the devil or whatever. So it's like, you know, they're talking to the dead, but it's kind of interesting when you use it for good, you know, like. I, when Edgar Casey used to channel, like he would go and ask the spirits, like, what is this person's illness? Oh, she's got cancer. Oh, what, how do we fix it in a time where there was no chemo? And he'd yeah. say, take the herb and take that and it would disappear. So it's, it's kind of cool when you talk to them and they know stuff we don't know. I, yeah, I, I've gotten iPhone codes. This guy, young guy died um, leaving a young wife and a young kid and a thousand pictures on his iPhone, but they didn't have the code. Uh, Spirit gave he gave it to me. His spirit gave it to me using a Ouija board and a spirit. And it's like I remember when the FBI wanted Apple to give him an iPhone code and they wouldn't. It's like, well, he's just talk to a medium and use a Ouija board. Ah, it's like kind of interesting how witchcraft has evolved because um, wouldn't you say like we were never allowed to talk about it? We were never. It was always a dirty secret, you know, especially when they hunted witches oh you know, gosh yeah you know, the hunt, witch hunters like in the 14th century like king james when they killed everybody but in scotland was the biggest massacre in scotland but like we really wouldn't even talk about it in the 60s like like when stevie nicks was told that you know, everybody was told she's witch, they were like oh and i was like yes like you know like and look yeah, at her now she is still rocking it Ke stevie nicks and kenny Loggins. Ah, and she was in coven you know in uh, the series which is like one of the best witch series ever and I was always like, you know, we were never allowed to say anything. My mom would be like, shut up and don't talk about it. And we were talking, Patty and I were talking about when we were kids. If you got an encyclopedia, for those who don't know what that is, it was Google. <laughs> a book. It was the history of everything in a, in a series of, of these beautiful leather bound books. And if you got a set of encyclopedia, your parents like wanted you on the educational path to Harvard. And so I got one and my dad and with it came this series called Man, Myth and Magic. It was about witchcraft, like serious witchcraft, like naked at the altar and, you know, the knives and Aleister Crowley and all that. And I was like, oh, this is so cool. And that's kind of where I got addicted to astrology. And we, we weren't allowed, my father would be like, you can't talk about it at the dinner table. Put that book away. You know, like he wouldn't let me. And I think about like how we talk about it now because of YouTube. Yeah. And, and it's a whole new world. It's, it's, it's a whole new world. We, we like, are getting that religious freedom. finally. It's cool to be a witch. And, you know, like, I always think like, you know, um, girls getting together and making a coven, like, you know, look out, look out, look out, yeah. Trump. The witches, <laughs> remember how they said they were going to take him down on the second time he ran? Yep. They said, we'll take you down, the witches. Yeah, it's like, yeah. we can power. Just tell them yeah. the men. Yeah, and, and, and it, it is, because it's, it's a belief system, whether you do it with witchcraft, at witchcraft as a religion, I worship the goddess, you know, or as a practice, I practice the craft of witchcraft, I mean, doing spell working and stuff. They're both empowering. They're not just... You don't have to to some up their God and do what they say and not what you think. We make us think. We take responsibility. It's an empowering belief system. So do you think it's important to get a goddess right away or wait? What do you think? No, no, I I don't I don't think it is. A lot of people 
Um, right now, what's important right now in me is everybody has to get a little elemental because we do have to save the planet. That's why so many people are seeing fairies now. That's why ghosts are making it bigger. People who didn't even believe this stuff, more new agers are seeing gnomes. They're real. Yes, they're real. They've always been tree spirits because I, we do have I to saw, bring our eyes back onto the planet. I saw, um, what did I see? Um, not a, what's the other one? Not a gnome. It's a... Um, Elves. Uh, I I don't know if it was an sprites, not a gin. Or the one that's oh. like the little elf. Is it elf? Maybe it was an elf. I saw an elf or gnome, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. I saw it fly past me, like with like a wizard thing. And I was like, what? And it was like, I was alert. I wasn't asleep. My eyes weren't closed. I saw it fly past me when we were talking to the spirits with the Oculus. So I thought, I was like, what the hell is that? Yeah. Yeah. I've and, seen a lot of stuff flying around your house. You have a lot of fairy coming in, fairy yeah. coming in. You have a lot of elemental stuff. I liked fairy magic. I was majorly into true blood. I always liked fairy magic, you no know, tomorrow. But what, what I think is cool is like, if you don't get a calling for a goddess, it's okay. Yeah, like, you know, it's okay. what's wrong with them if they don't, like, I don't identify with anybody, you know, like, and sometimes it's like, you're just identifying with your higher power. Yeah. And that's okay. Again, you could be like, I don't always separate my spirit guides. I don't have Archangel Fred tell me this and my ancestor grandma do this. And my, it's just like, okay, tell me the information who, you know, like group, group chat. So, and that there's not a right or wrong way in our craft, but you know, your right or wrong way. That's right. why I trust your intuition. Trust that. Anyway. Oh my God. I have to have you back. Cause we have to go and we've been too long, no, but it, so should we give them a mantra before we leave? Like, why don't you give them a mantra? What to say to bring love in? Um, I am love. I attract love. Love is everywhere. So I am you, love. I attract love. I have love is everywhere. Of love is everywhere. Love is love is available to me. Yes. That's a key one. That's I a am, good one. That's, so it's like I am love. Love is everywhere. Love is available to me now because yes. I think number one thing not available. To and breathe it in with your air and exhale it with your air. And if you have a house with steps, when you go up the steps, chant it as you go oh, up and chant it as you go down. Thing. I can give one more thing. So I have a course, Manifest Love. It's on my bio and it's about drawing love in. I did these steps to get David plus my magic. But there's another website I have called uh, Manifesting Your Soulmate in there are subliminals. So if you down, all this is inexpensive, by the way, it's like, you know, if you download the manifesting your soulmate, you will see that there are subliminals kind of like Kelly Howe has subliminals. There are isochronic subliminals, which you can listen while you're cleaning your house. It's not ones you have to go to sleep and you can put your headset on, you know, and your pods and clean your house and it'll shift your consciousness. And I know that when I use it, my boyfriend's really lovey-dovey. That and the fragrance. Like yesterday, I put the fragrance on. He goes, what did you put on? I go, David, I put the same thing on every day. No, it smells different. I want you now. He threw me down on the bed and ripped my clothes off. Yeah. He's like, I want you. And so the fragrance is really powerful. Just know you will get people at the grocery store, people at the gas station, people you didn't expect to come up to you and touch you and want to be with you. Now, it doesn't mean you have to accept them, but you're going to have opportunity. And then the subliminals are going to shift your consciousness to bring the only the one that's meant for you. You won't have the riffraff. I love that. Oh my God. So Patty Stanger, you guys on Instagram, her website, millionaire123. Millionaire's one, two, millionaire's club. But just go to my Instagram in the bio and Patty with an I and everything is there. If you can't find something, just DM me and I'll tell you. Okay. All right. All right. So thank you, beautiful Patty Sanger. Thank you for bringing your magic to the witching hour. Thank you. Thank you.